My name is Gary Russell, and this is The Sirens of Audio. G'day audiophiles, you are listening to the Sirens of Audio, the podcast that explores the universe of Doctor Who in the audio medium, and uh, this episode we will be calling uh, Randomoids 2, uh, The Selectatron Strikes Back. My name is Dwayne. And my name is Philip. G'day everyone, g'day audiophiles, good to have you with us. Oh, g'day Philip, it's good to be back for another randomoids, we had uh, an interesting selection last time because we had a had it throw up a short trip at us that was just one before uh, the last one that we did. Yes, and we also had a great torture episode, which I really enjoyed. But we'll get into that in a moment, no doubt. But before we do that, let's jump down that rabbit hole. <laughs> now, Philip, I've got an interesting rabbit hole discussion for you today. I was. Uh, I can't wait to see what it is. I was going through our emails for the Sirens of Audio, and I missed an email from a listener. Uh, <gasps> that, that's dreadful. And uh, I, I read the email, and I wasn't quite sure how to react. Of course, well, you you'll know what I mean when I read the email. But I'm going to read it because it's going to open up an interesting discussion for a few minutes for us. This is from uh, a listener, Andrew Palmer. And thank you, Andrew, for sending us this email. He says, Hello, Dwayne. I've been a subscriber to your podcast for a year now, having heard you on the Big Finish podcast and really enjoy it. However, the show would be so much better if you ceased with the Me 1, Me 2 intros. They are really annoying, unnecessary, unfunny, and detract from the show. I now skip past those introductions to get the proper content. Best wishes, Andy. So, what are your initial thoughts on that, Philip? Do you agree wholeheartedly with Andy? Uh, Dwayne, I think it's important that you have the fun you want to have and amuse yourself. And I think Andy's on the right track. If he doesn't like it, just skip over it. It's not hard to do. That's a fine thing to do. <laughs> At first, I was thinking, oh, it's not funny. Well... It's it's funny to me. Let's yeah, you're right, Philip. It is funny to me at times, and there are a lot of in jokes and a lot of things, because what what I based it on was a couple of things. Because when do you remember your first episode? We had uh, Richard Smith from Something Who on with us. Yes, I do. And remember if, that. if if you listen to his episodes, he writes a little comedy piece at the start of every one of his episodes, which I thought was really good. But I've also got a couple of little kids, and here in Australia, we have a show called Bananas in Pyjamas. Is that everywhere or is that just Australia? Uh, I think it's everywhere because I saw someone I know who does actually some of the... Someone in England does um, voices. They, they redub it in England. Right. Because they, can't they redub understand. it? Well, they can't understand the Australian accents, can they? So they've got to redub it. So, so the Bananas... So, sorry, bananas... So, sorry, apologies, English, so <clears throat> apologies, UK listeners. UK. In the UK, they redub it. Yeah, get it right, Philip. So the uh, the inspiration for me one and me two comes from B one and B two and the way they talk to each other. So uh, so I thought that was funny too. But anyway, it got me thinking. Well, maybe if I'm not if it's that irritating to someone, uh, maybe I shouldn't do it. But then I thought, well, I've had sort of other feedback, probably eighty percent feedback from it's been good and twenty percent. So I've had. I, I thought about the feedback I've got about those segments and four out of five of them uh, enjoyed it and uh, this one doesn't. But it makes me think, well, should I should I listen to the feedback of uh, one of my listeners like that if it's negative? It got me thinking about, in terms of Big Finish, it got me thinking about the time when Nick Briggs changed the theme tune for the Eighth Doctor audios. And I remember he was very passionate about keeping it that way he wasn't going to change back to the to the uh to the old theme the original eighth doctor theme uh there was something about this particular arrangement of the theme that he did 
using just um, just sampling the original Delia Derbyshire theme uh, was very close to his heart, and he and he didn't want to he didn't want to change it. Now I know Philip for you that didn't detract from the stories, but it did for me to to a degree for a while. After a couple of years, I was fine, um, and I can I can go back and listen to it. Particularly after with Dark Eyes, he went back to it anyway, so I was happy with that. But um, what's your what are your thoughts on listening to the wishes of our audience? Because because even with the TV series, there's a lot of people who uh, have negative views of the current series uh, of Doctor Who as well, uh, and they sort of uh, bemoan the fact that fans bemoan the fact that no one's listening to to their complaints about the series, and they're putting it out regardless. So should we just do what we have, whatever we feel like, Philip, or should we should we care about who's listening to us? Well, I think we should care about what people think. But that being said, it's still about opinion. And the thing about humor, humor is very much. Uh, opinion based it's very much time bound it's culture bound um so yeah so in in terms of the humor will appeal differently to different people at different times depending on what mood they're in so i, th- I think i mean i think it's fantastic to get feedback and <laughs> it makes me laugh because i think it's rather funny um but yeah i think if if there was an overwhelming ground sort of people saying it's really bad you should stop it then i think we'd have to take that a bit more seriously but yeah, you know, the fact that a couple of people don't like it, well, I think that's fine. That's the, that's their opinion, for whatever reason, um, and and they, you know, I think we need to let people be entitled to their opinions. I think that's imp- imp- opinions are a good thing. What you then have to do is then listen in terms of well, what what is it about that they don't like? And the hard thing about humor is I think humor is subjective. So I can't remember the email exactly, but I mean I think he doesn't find it funny. Um, I know you find it funny, so that's one person, who, one of our people who listen <laughs> finds it funny, so that's a good thing. Um, I smile because I know that you're finding it funny, and I just like the fact that you're happy, Dwayne. That makes me happy. <laughs> um, oh, you're being you're being very diplomatic there, Philip. <laughs> oh, now you now you're freaking me out. But you you wouldn't you, you know, it's it's not what I would choose to do for myself. But I, hey, I think yeah, you want to put the time in it, you go for it, mate, and. Yeah, everyone's going to start somewhere on the rung, and yeah, maybe there's a great comedy career for you in the future. This will be the very oh. starting point of where it starts from. I think Andrew, uh, sorry, signs at Andy. Andy, I've missed my calling when it comes to comedy with you, mate. Sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry, mate. Uh, by the time this comes out, you may have missed. Uh, you may have not had to skip. Uh, <laughs> So many intros of the Sirens of Audio by the time this comes out because you, because I'm scared. I'm scared to. Uh, to oh, upset just you anybody. keep you keep doing it, Dwayne. It's not it's not hard to jump. But you, you tell me that um, Nick Briggs changed the theme to the Eighth Doctor. I'd have no idea that happened because I jump the theme every time we get to it. So you I do. I never listen. I don't ever listen to the theme music. I don't. Yeah, I just if something's new, I listen to it, and and I actually tend to listen to the spin-off themes more because I. I like them is the wrong word, but they're newer and so therefore more interesting. But no, I I haven't got time to listen to a theme song for every audio I listen to. I just jump it. To get you in the mood, though. All right, that'll do, though. <laughs> let's get it. Let's get out of this rabbit hole and let's get into the main topic. We've got Randomoids. <laughs> which is Randomoids 2, the Selectatron Strikes Back, and it shows two stories for us. The first one we're going to consider is a short trip released in January 2016, called Gardens of the Dead, written by Jenny T. Colgan. And it features Mark Strickson as the reader of this short trip. Um, So obviously it's a Fifth Doctor story. What's interesting about this is that it is set immediately after the events of Mordron Undead. Um, So it's... uh, and, And you really get a chance to get inside Turlow's head in this story. I think it's, uh, it's really interesting. Big Finish presents... Doctor Who, Short Trips, Gardens of the Dead. It it manifested. It forced its way through me. And Nissa, frozen stiff, glanced beside me and suddenly she was screaming. And it echoed around the graveyard. (coughs) I whisked around. Standing beside me, swirling in the mist, was a grey dust version of the Doctor. Celery, everything. The figure disintegrated immediately, collapsed into a cloud. 
but Nyssa had already seen it. She screamed again and started to run back towards the TARDIS. He's dead! He isn't! I was nearly screaming too with the pain in my head, hands on my knees. He isn't! I think it's just a manifestation of... The pain hit me again. <laughs> Nyssa had gone, charging through the gravestones. Doctor! And then from the distance came another echoing scream. I ran, or more accurately, kind of half galloped through the pain. Big finish. We love stories. Before we came on here, we were talking about John Colshaw and his uh, characterizations that he that he puts forward. What what were your thoughts on Mark Strict Mark Strickson's characterizations during this reading? Look, I enjoy Mark's. I, th- I think Mark's a great actor. Um, as well, he's you know in some ways it's a bit sad he didn't have a better career than he did do because I think he was capable of a very huge acting career. I mean, I, th- I think what he has done in terms of documentaries and saving the planet is probably more valuable for us than if he continued acting. But he's certainly a very talented actor. Um, I th- I was amused by his Australian accent. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm not sure Considering he's of- lived so long in Australia uh, and New Zealand, so the New Zealand accent's not too dissimilar to Australian, but um, he did spend a lot of time here. And uh, I think he's not characterising the Australian accent so much as Tegan. So he's really he's really trying to get Tegan's think, grumpy side there. I think he's making fun of Janet Fielding's accent because <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You know, well, you know, go and listen to Janet's interview with us. She has no Australian accent. Let well, <laughs> sorry, as an Australian, I don't hear any Australian accent in her. Maybe she still has, but certainly, yeah, you know, I don't think. And even when she was playing the part in Doctor Who, she didn't really have an Australian accent. She had to put that on, and so I actually think he's having a go at her. <laughs> Her and her accent <laughs> more than he's actually trying to do an Australian accent, but that that amused me more than anything else. I think the thing that is interesting about short trips, my my issue often with short trips is they have the ability to be unbelievably creative, and I love I love the creative ones. Um, what is good about this in terms of it's trying to be creative is in terms of it's actually Turlo in later life. He's actually an old man recalling a story, so he's back on his home planet, and he's recalling back and. And, yeah, so once again, being able to see Turlo's mind, it's a funny gap to put a story in because there doesn't feel like there really could be much of a gap between Maud and Undead and um, Terminus. And he basically tries to write a bit of a romance between him and Nyssa. He's, he's obviously got emotional feelings for Nyssa that it's been written in, and she conveniently ends up with amnesia <laughs> to wipe out the entire episode from her mind mm. before Terminus. Yeah. So there, there's a few conceits in there which are... Amusing conceits, but yeah, it, it's it's an okay story. As I said, like like most short trips, that they can be a bit too uh, just a narrated story, and I I like to, a little bit more creativity than that. Though some of them are spectacular, but this one it's a solid story. It was an okay listen to. Um, next time I listen to it, I'd listen to it double speed. That would be, that would do me fine. I loved the the concept of the Gardens of the Dead itself. I thought it was a I thought it was a, a beautiful concept, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, the way the way it was done. If I say any more than that, it would spoil the story, and I wouldn't want to do that. So, um, there there are hints there throughout that Nissa is thinking about leaving. So Jenny Jenny has uh, put that in nicely. Um, you've still got uh, the Black Guardian uh, inside Turlo's head as he was throughout that Black Guardian trilogy. Um, so that's uh, sort of ties it into that section of stories as well, which is and I do think Mark, is... Strick, Mark Strick does the Black Guardian particularly well. Mm. Like I yeah. it felt, it felt like Valentin Dial. I, I really was quite taken aback back by how good he was at doing that that impression. Yeah. So Sam was done by Steve Fox and produced by Ian Atkins and directed by Lisa Bauman. So uh, a very worthy addition to the short trips range. So. With that being released in January 2016, the next story that the Randomoid Selectatron threw at us was a story from December 2015, just one month earlier. And that was Torchwood One Rule, the fourth Torchwood story in their monthly range when they began. The 21st century is when everything changes and we're ready. Obviously. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions, Torchwood. One rule. I'm standing on an invisible lift. 
and I'm about to enter Torchwood 3. Hooray! You must be Torchwood then. It's the murders, you see. There's been five in the last two weeks. Well, murders? That's what the police are for. Oh, I thought you might help me. Oh, bless you, but no. I'm from London. I don't do local politics. Good night. I run a top-secret organisation that protects all of Great Britain from invasion. I have tea with the Queen twice a week. I'm trying to keep you alive and you're behaving like children. In fact, I've had enough of this city. Big finish. We love stories. Oh, oh, happy day. Well, the Torchwood range at the moment for me is probably the range I'm enjoying the most, actually, because every, once again, it's a monthly range, and it's the last of the Big Finish monthly ranges now, Doctor Who monthly ranges ended. So this this one's still going for a bit longer, no sign of it ending. Uh, this The Torchwood range actually does exactly what I want a good range to do, which is unbelievable amounts of variety, um, creativity, adventure, and just great storytelling. And so, although there's a bit of a shaky start at the beginning with some for some of the stories, Torchwood now is in a really amazing place. So every episode that comes out has something to offer. It's it's a full cast production, but they don't put the whole Torchwood cast together. So usually there's no more than two of the regulars in a show, and often not even that. And then they also do these amazing little side trips. Um, they did a Charlie's Angels one um, in the 70s, which was just hilarious, but which actually I'd love to see those characters come back again. And then this, of course, one is, is where they've actually brought Tracy Ann Oberon back playing Yvonne Hartman. So, because we know Tracy, we know Yvonne, Yvonne Hartman from the last two episodes of the second season of David Tennant. Uh, Yvonne Hartman's ruling Torchwood One in London. She's the one in control of the sphere. She's a people person um, who, trans- who tragically gets turned into a Cyberman. But this story is actually taking place a couple of years before that. So this is a couple of weeks after the Autron invasion has happened and Yvonne's gone down to Cardiff to, to, to Torchwood One. So it is just funny as... I mean, I love Yvonne Hartman. I think she's an amazing character. This audio allows us to really explore her character in great detail. Um, so she's, got, she's gone down to Torchwood Cardiff because she wants to steal something that they have, but she doesn't want them to know about it. She keeps talking to Yanto, who's back at, at this stage, of course, still working with Torchwood One. He hasn't gone down to Cardiff yet because the Cybermen haven't taken over. So if you know your Doctor Who Torchwood history, you sort of know where it fits in. But basically, it's Yvonne Hartman for 24 hours on the streets of Cardiff just having a very, very, very bad day where things just get worse and worse for her. And it's just brilliantly acted. Uh, it's directed by Barnaby Edwards. So he, he does... He, he manages... Barnaby always pulls in the most amazing cast. I think because he's an actor himself, he has worked with some, some amazing people. And also, I think because he spent a lot of time down in Cardiff being inside a Dalek, he's managed to meet a few Welsh people. So he manages to, to pull together a, a fairly strong Welsh cast of people that he needs. And the cast are just spectacular. Tracy Ann Oberman just deals the show, though. And for the moment this episode ends, we know we want more of her. Because, yes, yeah, she, she's complex and funny and awful. And, yeah. And you have to laugh when everything keeps happening to her. Dwayne. And, and speak, speaking of the cast, um, it's almost like a Paternoster gang uh, reunion there. Because you've got uh, Dan Starkey. Um, in a in a role, you've got Katrin a couple of roles each actually. Katrin Stewart who plays Jenny, um, she's there. Um, but probably for the, the the casting that confused me the most was um, Gareth Armstrong because when I saw his name, the character's name is Barry Jackson, and I thought Barry Jackson, that's that's Drax. So I went and had a look and thought, when was this made? He must have been made around the time he. He, uh, he, he, 
he died, but it was actually made a couple of years after he died. So I thought I had another look and it, I was actually getting it round the wrong way. So Gareth Armstrong actually played Giuliano in The Mask of Mandragora. So he, uh, he's he got a fantastic voice. I could listen to his voice all day, even with the Welsh accent. What made me laugh about this story is that I've been to Cardiff just once and I only spent a couple of days there. But the people I bumped into, including the taxi drivers, people in, you know, in, in bars and things like that, they all sounded like this. And they all started complaining about things in the same way that the Welsh people started complaining in this one. And it was hilarious, absolutely hilarious. And just the way that um, someone from London will come in and and uh, and view Cardiff. So um, I like the references to Classic Who. The, um, Yvonne's there to pick up a Draven scanner. So Galaxy 4 reference there. When she's talking to Yanto, she refers to Lisa, who was ultimately converted into the Cyberwoman for that Cyberwoman episode in uh, Torchwood Series 1. And what else was there? Can I just say, I don't think... Just say that, um, uh, Caitlin Stewart isn't Catherine Stewart. I think um, the Paternoster person is Catherine Stewart, not Caitlin Stewart. I think they're actually different actresses. Oh, did I get that wrong? I believe so. I've just been sitting here I, double, double checking myself. I can stand corrected. No problem. It did sound like it though. So, but maybe all Welsh people sound the same to me. I don't know. Except uh, in Panos again, Catherine Stewart is English. She's she, um, it London. is English, but the, the voice. Yeah. So oh, it is Caitlin. It is yes. Caitlin, is it? Yeah, it's okay. a, yes. Yes. <clears throat> You're right. It's Katrine is the other one. Sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry. I can I can be wrong like the rest of them. Um. I'm curious to see what else uh, Caitlin Stewart's in now, but that's nothing, okay. Nothing a big finish. Oh, you looked at that? I, yeah, I, yeah. So when I saw her name, I thought it was I thought it was the same person too, which is why I looked her up just to double check that. And then it said she'd only been in one thing, which was just the Torchwood play. She'd been nothing else. So I went, oh, okay, it must be just a different actress. And then I did actually double check the, the name of the Paternosa person, the Jenny, but... Just check them. Because, yes. You should have left it. If you didn't correct me, someone may have emailed, emailed in and complained about oh, it. Oh, yes. You get, get your facts right. <laughs> okay. Very good. So that's uh, Torchwood One Rule. Uh, an excellent story. All the Torchwood monthlies are pretty darn good. So um, you can't go too wrong with that. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that one? No, I mean, that's about the most of my notes. Just, it's really worth getting. It's a great show. Lots of fun. Excellent. So that leads us into what is going to be next for Randomoids 3, the return of the Selectatron. Let's see. So the first story that the Randomoid Selectatron is going to throw up at us is... If I can get it working. It keeps throwing up Toby Haydock's Who's Round. Oh, right. There's so many of those in there. I'm surprised. Yeah, there's another short trip. I'm not doing a short trip again. <laughs> oh, it's something. And we'll go from here. Okay, here we go. The first one for Randomoids 3 is going to be a Fifth Doctor adventure. Another Fifth Doctor adventure by Andrew Smith. This is called The Star Men. And... What number is that? Released in January 2017. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was four years ago now. And uh, from from memory, it was a it was a good story. I enjoyed all the Fifth Doctor stories around that time. So uh, looking forward to that one. Let's see what the Randomoid Selectatron throws up for us for our second pick. Uh, it just threw me a Blake Seven, but I can I, I feel like Doctor Who. <laughs> I love Blake Seven. Just threw me a Doctor Who. I didn't really want to do. <laughs> this is definitely the point. Okay. <laughs> Selection number two on the Randomoid Selectatron is an eighth Doctor story from February 2001. It is Sword of Orion. Oh, okay, there great. You go. We'll do that one. So we're going to look at uh, the fifth Doctor, the Starman, and the eighth Doctor and Charlie, Sword, Sword of Orion. 
We're going to have a look Fantastic. at those next for Randomoids 3. So that's, uh, that's, that's it. Fantastic. Uh, got any recommendations? Uh, let me think. Actually, I think it's your turn for recommendations. Are you sure it's my turn? I'm positive. 100%. <laughs> Bother. Um, well, actually, what, having just done a, a torture, I'm going to recommend this month's Torchwood. Um, having just finished it, uh, it's an Owen Harper Torchwood. Uh, it is called uh, Lease of Lease of Life. Uh, so it's um, Owen pretending to be a council worker, going into a house uh, and working with these three housemates who don't know each other, don't like each other. And yet there's a threat that they need to de deal with. So it's a great, great audio. Um, I always enjoy the own Harper. They tend to be a bit more serious than some of the others. But yeah, so that's, that's this month's or well, last month's release, Torchwood. What about you, Dwayne? What, what are you recommending? I've come com completely unprepared. So, however, I have been going through some old boxes with CDs and tapes and things. And there's a few sitting behind me. I'm going to pick one. Hang on. Right, the, <laughs> here's a cassette version. You may have the CD version. The Paradise of Death. There you go. That's my recommendation for this week. And I, I really think we should do uh, a review of at least The Paradise of Death. I don't know about The Ghosts of End Space. I'm having to do both. Can... They're both. They're both. Yeah, it's a bit more painful. But I've not listened to them both for a lot of years. Well, Ghosts of End Space is good because it's got Stephen Thorne in it, but um, Paradise of Death has got Nida, whoever plays Nida, Peter Miles. So that's uh, that's what that's what's good in that one, and it's a better story, better story. So we should do those one day. But yeah, dig out your Paradise of Death and give that another whirl, give it another spin. And I just bought myself a cassette to MP3. Uh, player, so I can plug it into the computer and start ripping things off into electronic files on my old cassettes. So I'm starting to go through that ever so slowly. So there you go. So that's it for this uh, episode of uh, the Sirens of Audio. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Go and listen to those stories that we uh, talked about today. You won't regret it. Anything else you'd like to say, Philip? Uh, no. Have a great week, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Bye for now. Buy me one, buy me two. Oh, don't say that. You have been listening to the Sirens of Audio episode 54, Randomoids 2. The Selectatron strikes back with your hosts, Philip Edney and Dwayne Bunny. Next time on the show, Sophie Aldred takes time out from her state-of-the-art laundry cupboard home recording studio to chat with us about her time on the TV show, The Wilderness Years, her time with Big Finish, and her recently released audiobook version of Doctor Who at Childhood's End. Theme music by Husky by the Geek. You'll find his video of the theme on his YouTube channel. Send us your feedback via email at sirensofaudio at gmail.com. Links to all our podcasts, YouTube and social media locations can be found on our website sirensofaudio.com. Please rate, review, subscribe and share so more people can discover the joy of being tortured by my substandard attempts at humour. And if you need some soothing balm the next time you sit down to discover a burning randomoid, just listen to the sirens of audio, because audio drama rocks!